everyone, I'm just going to read to you chapter 9. Uh, it's called Life Starts Throwing Stuff. But life goes on. That's a saying we ravens have. Life goes on. We're social creatures, see? What do you mean you don't see at all? Oh, you don't know what stoical means, do you? Like I said before, go to school. But back to being stoical. It means, quite simply, that we take things as it comes. The good, the bad and the in-between. Life tends to throw things at you sometimes and it doesn't always throw things that, that are nice. Sometimes it throws young lads into pools and sticks goldfish in their ears. Crack, tuck, tuck, tuck. Anyhow, today I was having a lovely time going through one of my hidey holes. Us ravens are always stashing our stuff um, away somewhere. I've got hiding places all over the place, under rugs, behind chests and so on. So I was enjoying myself, no end, putting stuff in, taking stuff out, putting it back in again. I even found a small lump of dead rat stashed away. Yum, 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 yum. That was a tasty surprise. So there I was, up on the roof, chewing away on the old rodent, when I spotted what looked like a ghost with itching powder down the back of its neck in across the road at the high speed and headed for the house opposite. I hastily ra um, ran what was left of the rat under the roof tile and floated across the road myself. Y you, Patter, won't, um, won't be very pleased, I told the ghost. The ghost threw back at sheet angrily. How do you, do you know it was me? Perilous asked. I sighed. Sometimes it's not much fun being as wise and worldly weary as me. I could just tell, I told him. It's the way you walk. I've got to help Scorcher, Perilous declared. It's his big day today. It's big day tomorrow. He's going to race and I've got to help him prepare. He's got some new way of practicing. I see. Does that mean you're you'll be borrowing Crabus Goat again? Crabuses, sorry, goat again. Is that sensible? Uh, they're out. I saw them go. Scorcher is getting the goats ready. That much was true. I could hear an almighty clamour of bleating and blathering going on and I hope Crabius and Septicemia were well out of earshot. Then Scorcher has himself appeared, grinning from ear to ear. I got him, he cried. Time for a final practice co croc bag. Salve. Salve. Hello. Try and remember. Goodbye is Val. Aren't you coming on well? Scorcher grinned at me. How, do, how are you doing? Have you come to watch? I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Good. I've got a great plan. Perilous, help me with these two planks, will you? We're going to tie them across the goats. I studied the goats carefully. They were now joined together by two planks lying across their backs. I tried as hard as I could, but I failed to see how a pair of goats with two planks was going to help Scorcher win his place in the green team. Scorcher tightened the ropes holding the planks in place. Just think, by this time tomorrow, I could be a fully paid member of the green team with a real chariot and real horses thundering round the ring at the Circus Maximus. It would be a dream come true. Indeed, I said, but what is this new contraption of yours? Ah, brilliant, isn't it? You see, I had this idea in the night. You haven't been talking to Madass Bananas, have you? You do realise that some of his ideas are, well, um, unusual, I suggested. No, 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 this came to me in a dream. It's brilliant. You see, chariot racing is much about balance. Balance, I repeated, and I remember Perilous walking on the washing line. Yes. The track is rough, the chariot gets thrown all over the place, so we've got to, so I've tried, what I've tried to do here is to imitate the roughness of the road. Ah, so you're trying to get the goats to throw you all over the place. Lightning was dawning in my brain, like the sun rising from an, a, an obscuring mist of the early morn, allowing its radiant beams to burst forth upon the world. Oh, I really should be a poet. Exactly, and I must keep my balance while standing on these planks. That's the trick of it. If I can stay on my feet while these giddy goats 
do their best to throw me to the ground, then riding a proper racing chariot will be easy. Perilous grinned at me. It's a scorcher brilliant. Hmm. I can't say I was completely convinced that Scorcher's scor scor brilliance or the goat's dancing idea, uh, um, or the goat dancing idea, but one thing was quite obvious, Scorch was going to go for it, and go for it, he did. I have never seen so much dust. Scorcher and the goats set off at breakneck speed, with the plants bouncing about like two crocodiles having a wrestling match. I am the champion, Scorcher grinned scor scor grin back over his shoulders at us as he lurched from one foot to another, standing upright on the planks while the two goats carried on thundering round and round faster and faster. It was a blur of frantic fur, flapping tongues and one wildly whooping would-be charioteer. Huge clouds of dirt and grit rose from beneath the pounding hooves of the two goats and settled on all the washing that had just been hung out to dry by the ghastly slave put upon. The poor girl screamed with dismay. No, my washing! She came tearing out to try to rescue it all and ran right across the path for Scorcher's thundering plank tank. He yelled in horror, swerving violently to avoid her. And just missed the terrified girl. Unfortunately, Scorcher was now heading straight for the Ghastlings, home to high speed, uh, Ghastly's home at high goat speed. With no time to stop, he plunged headlong through the front door that had been left open, uh, left half open by the slaves. I covered my ears. Crunch, bang, the door came off its splinter, splintering hinges. Crunk, thud, ouch, ouch, splang. All sorted bits of broken furniture came tumbling out through the door and into the yard. Just as the dust began to settle, who should come yelling into the yard, waving their arms as if it was the end of the world, was Kravis and Septicemia, the ghastlies themselves. Poor Scorcher, there was no escape this time. Kravis found the young charioteer half buried beneath a broken table, two chairs and a pile of smashed pottery, including the old jar. Scorcher had olives and olive oil pasted all over his head and chest. Meanwhile, Trendia's white goat, quite unharmed by it all, was busily eating Septicemia's best rug. Crabius' eyes narrowed a tiny, at a tiny slits and a joyless smile spread across his thin lips. This time you're for it, Scorcher. It's the magistrate for you and then jail. Oh dear. And as I keep saying, life throws things at you, sometimes quite literally. First, it was a weaving machine. Then it was an upside down perilous. Now it was two goats, two planks, a charity, and a jug load of or or olive oil. Crap! Nice one, Scorcher. That's the end of that chapter. Take care.